Greg Gordon, how many legal claims have been filed with regard to asbestos in this country? Do you know no one knows, which is one of the remarkable things about this uh, whole issue. Uh, the, the dimensions of the asbestos problem, which is one of the real colossal tragedies of the 20th century in America and, and now into the 21st century, are really not known fully. Uh, uh, there are projections by public health experts that before it's over, a half a million workers will be dead. Of uh, asbestos half a related illnesses. Very briefly, when, what is asbestos and why have there been so many lawsuits filed? Asbestos uh, is a naturally forming mineral that um, uh, pr when it flakes off or, or um, crumbles produces uh, microscopic fibers which when they embed in your lungs can cause uh, a v about three or four different uh, progressive lung illnesses, the worst being a rare uh, cancer of the lining of the lungs known as mesothelioma. It kills about two to three thousand people a year and it's, it's not uh, curable. Um, and um, the reason there are so many lawsuits is that there are so many sick people. Some, some projections call for uh, uh, more than two million Americans to suffer from asbestos-related illnesses before this is over in the next 50 years, if it, if, if it can be uh, reined in totally. What was asbestos or is asbestos used for uh, industrially and how do people uh, get exposed to it? Well, asbestos is, of course, best known as a fire retardant. Uh, it was used in fire retardant sprays inside buildings to, pr to protect people in, in, in case uh, there's, a, there's a fire. And uh, it's used in um, brake pads in cars. It's used in horticultural products because it, well, it wasn't, asbestos wasn't really used in the horticultural products of uh, vermiculite. Uh, that is mined at four, four mines uh, in the United States, um, uh, contains veins of, <coughs> of asbestos. And uh, this wasn't known for, for a time, and then it was thought uh, by some that it wasn't anything to worry about, but it turns out that it's uh, also uh, claimed a, a, a very large toll of, uh, of Americans uh, with illnesses now. Okay. What has Congress done? By the way, we're talking about asbestos legislation and lawsuits. If you'd like to dial in, the numbers are on the screen. What has Congress done uh, with regard to asbestos and the lawsuits? Here's the problem. There are now 67 American companies in bankruptcy uh, because of the huge number of asbestos claims. Hundreds of thousands uh, have already been filed. Uh, John's Man which was the biggest producer of asbestos products, went bankrupt some uh, 20 years ago. And it has alone uh, received 20,000 claims. I'm sorry, has received 600,000 claims. And uh, a large percentage of those have since been settled. But uh, originally, they were going to pay 100 cents on the dollar. They're now paying a nickel on the dollar. So a lot of people today are, are sick and ending up with very little compensation uh, from the companies that were culpable or that uh, were alleged to be culpable. Did, and so now has Manville a, been found culpable or uh, just Manville alleged to be? Manville essentially admitted culpability. Uh, it has a trust uh, uh, that pays out to claimants uh, uh, based on certain medical criteria that they must meet. Uh, and there are as I said, 67 other companies that are in, in bankruptcy and many, many other companies, the, the total number of corporate defendants uh, in asbestos litigation is today about 8,400 in the United States. And again, the congressional role. Congress's uh, role has been to try to come up with some kind of a massive settlement that will resolve what is becoming uh, a, a, a growing problem, and that is how to take care of these people who are sick, uh, how to compensate their survivors if asbestos shortened their lives. And uh, there have been attempts in Congress for a number of years to try to come up with a global settlement that might sort of mirror that, 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 that was uh, achieved with the tobacco industry um, and, and put into law. Uh, this year, there's a great momentum to try to do something, in part, I think, because the business community recognizes that they've got the House, the Senate, and the White House, and that uh, they might be able to get some legislation through that will be a little bit more sympathetic to business than maybe 
a Democratic Congress might have uh, ana or adopted. And, and uh, the problem is that uh, there's not really enough money, or there hasn't historically been enough money to go around under any scenario to take care of all these people. And so they're trying to come up with something that will at least be more equitable. Today you have lawsuits uh, being resolved in Mississippi for far larger uh, amounts of money, uh, compensation to victims than, uh, say, in Montana. It's inequitable. Some people uh, uh, happen to be victims of companies that went into Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and they get a much less uh, money in the end than a, than a victim of, uh, 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 say, a General Motors or a Ford that are still operating companies uh, and maybe uh, got exposed to too much uh, asbestos dust off brake pads. Um, why are we talking about this today? Senator Orrin Hatch, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, with um, uh, some uh, uh, cooperation and, and, and uh, collaboration from, from uh, Senate Democrats, has been trying to forge a compromise deal for months. It's gone on for about four months now, and today Senator Hatch plans to formally introduce draft legislation. Uh, that would maybe be the start, start of uh, uh, attempts in Congress to mark up something that would be acceptable to all parties. Uh, the problem is that the AFL-CIO, which essentially represents uh, union workers, is very unhappy with what the senator is finally putting in after uh, all these talks. Why? Well, the, the number that, that, that I didn't see a number in uh, the 111 page bill that the senator has, is uh, uh, and it could it could have changed in the last couple of days but the draft um, measure that he circulated two days ago uh, did not have a global number in it that I could find but I'm told that the, it would involve about a hundred and eight billion dollars uh, over uh, 26 years essentially but uh, presumably the, the plan would be to, to cover victims going back uh, or going on going forward for maybe 40 50 years labor says the number is too low and but the, its chief concern is the description of the of and the standards for uh, the, the the medical criteria uh, that that uh, victims would have to meet to be compensated. Uh, what kind of rigor, rigorous uh, testing would they have to go through? What kind of proof would they have to make before they would be covered? And then there's, there's a scale for diseases ranging from what is known as pleural disease, which is a, a certain amount of scarring on your, on the, on your lung, uh, on, on the pleura uh, of your lungs, which is the outer lining. And this is what, what causes the um, breathing problems that these people um, encounter. Or uh, you could have asbestosis, a much more serious restrictive lung disease, or lung cancer, or at the top, in the worst case, mesothelioma, the disease I mentioned a few minutes ago. And uh, the, the AFL-CIO doesn't feel there's enough money in for these some of these categories. Okay, let's get our callers involved okay. here. Uh, first call up is from, let's see, our first call up is from Detroit. Good morning. Detroit, you're on the air. Hear me all? Can you hear me all right? Go ahead. Yes, good morning. All right, I've got a comment and a question. Uh, a real quick comment is uh, I don't think the American people understand just how hard it is to litigate against a major corporation. I was involved in a lawsuit for four years. And finally, in exasperation, everybody just settled for pennies on the dollar. Uh, and when you contact your agencies, your governmental agencies, specifically the SEC, you'll find that there's no cops that's on the beat and there's nobody home. Uh, these agencies have been gutted. My question for you, sir, is <clears throat> I see that you investigate these type of things. Have you ever investigated uh, the biological hazards uh, uh, other than other neural toxins, especially electromagnetic radiation that comes from towers, uh, high kilovolt uh, transmission lines. Uh, recently, there was a study uh, finally uh, came out by the EPA about how uh, this causes cancer and how this is really a number one, this is a more serious carcinogen than, than uh, asbestos, neural toxins, and uh, causes a lot of diseases. Craig Gordon. 
Well, um, I have to say, in, in a former job, I, w I worked for the Detroit News, and I actually did a, a four-part series on toxins in the workplace other than asbestos. And one thing I would say about asbestos is that asbestos is easier to litigate because it leaves scarring uh, on the lungs, and, and, it, and it leaves asbestos fibers in the body. If you have uh, exposure to something like, say, cobalt dust or some of these um, uh, chemicals and solvents that are used in the auto industry, they leave your body, and then you have to turn around and, and try to prove your exposure 20 or 30 years before you got cancer, and it's extremely difficult, as you say. And in fact, uh, a lot of the toxic tort bar, as they call the lawyers who represent victims of various toxins, has dried up. I haven't done any work on electromagnetic fields, but I know if you, just if you, if you buy a cell phone and you look at the brochure that comes with your cell phone, it says, we don't know whether or not it causes cancer. So proceed at, uh, uh, with that knowledge. Uh, there are many, many substances in the environment that people can, can be exposed to that is very difficult to litigate, I agree. Pensacola, Florida, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hi, Mr. Gordon. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to know uh, uh, who's really in control of uh, this uh, uh, taking care of people that have been exposed to asbestos, because I tell you, I... Uh, spent 20 years in the Navy, 73 to 93. Mm -hmm. I was exposed to asbestos in 73, and it was on my service record all the way up till I retired. In 94, I went to the VA and found out I had asbestosis. Well, I didn't have any symptoms, so I said, well, I'll just wait till uh, I start having symptoms, and then I'll file. Well, I started having symptoms in 1998, and I went ahead and went to file, and they told me that uh, you had to file within two years, and if you didn't, you were just out of luck. So here I am with the asbestosis, and I can't get a dime from anybody. I can't get anybody to say to, to do anything. So who's really in charge of this money? Is this the government or the big the, the big industries controlling uh, the the you know people like us that are sick and, and not being able to get any uh, retribution? Caller, where uh, what is who is your suit against, and are you part of a class action? No, I like I said, uh, they know exactly who. Uh, uh, see, I was tearing down some barracks in, uh, on NES Pensacola, so they know, it's all my service record, they know exactly who put the asbestos in there. But it doesn't matter because I did not file within the two years. You, in Florida, you have to file within two years of being diagnosed. It doesn't matter if you're uh, showing signs or not. And that's, that, that's basic. That's, it's, like a, it's a trick to me because, like I said, I had no symptoms whatsoever. But now that I do, uh, I can't get any uh, retribution for it. Thanks, Carl. This is one of the things that's wrong with the, the current system, although there, there will be a, a, a similar statute of limitations in the, in the federal legislation if it, if it stays as uh, Senator Hatch has drafted it. And what you, what you describe is, is a uh, plight that has, that, or predicament that has hit all too many people. Uh, the, the states have various statute of limitations. Some of them uh, go up to six years. Uh, which you mentioned in 1992, you were diagnosed and you started having symptoms in 98. But this is one of the problems. And, and it's also a, sort of an irony about the current system. The, co the courts are uh, facing or, or trying to deal with hundreds of thousands of suits that have been filed. Uh, and, and the industry says so many of these suits uh, are filed on behalf of people who aren't sick. Well, the problem is once you develop... Uh, 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 or, or your lungs show scarring at the bottom end where you might have uh, pleural thickening, scarring that causes your, your, your pleura to thicken, but you don't have any symptoms yet. Asbestos is a progressive disease and it, and it takes a while. Sometimes it can take up to 40 years before serious symptoms develop, but you have been diagnosed with an asbestos illness technically and you are on notice to file a claim against the defendants companies that you feel uh, put you in a situation where you were exposed so you're in a real problem and the courts have all kinds of cases involving people who aren't sick yet but have an asbestos uh, uh, illness technically next call for Greg Gordon of the Minneapolis Star Tribune on asbestos comes from DeKalb Illinois Democrat hello mr. Gordon Good morning. Good morning. Um, you mentioned Johns Mansfield, but isn't W.R. Grace the biggest polluter of asbestos in the country? Uh, no. Uh, John, Johns Manville produced about a third of the asbestos that was commercially um, manufactured in the United States and distributed. 
Uh, WR Grace has had uh, a couple 300,000 claims filed against it uh, for various products it produced, including uh, fire retardant sprays, which I mentioned before, were, that are were used uh, for many years in buildings to try to uh, contain, help contain a fire if it broke out. Uh, and it also made the uh, vermiculite attic insulation that we have um, uh, as, a, as a current issue now in, in Minnesota and in, plant, in states across the country where uh, plants used asbestos contaminated vermiculite, vermiculite to make a variety of products and WR Grace owned many of those plants or provided the contaminated vermiculite ore to many of those plants. Next call, Greenwood, South Carolina. Good morning. Yes, sir. I was just wondering, uh, I remember when they took all the asbestos out of the schools and the government spent billions of dollars removing this asbestos only mm. to find out later that as long as it was stationary or undisturbed, it wasn't harmful to anybody. I wonder what else are we going to find out about asbestos that, I mean, how, how do you determine who has lung problems from asbestos or from smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, or what, <clears throat> where does it end? Thank you, caller. You have hit on a point of contention in the, in the uh, current negotiations because uh, uh, smoking and asbestos have a certain synergy. In fact, if you are a smoker and you're also exposed to asbestos, your chances of, of uh, getting lung cancer go up exponentially. Uh, in the draft bill that the senator has proposed, a person who smoked and or smokes and and suffers from uh, lung cancer will get fifty thousand dollars a, a non-smoker uh, who has um, lung cancer and an, and, an, and an asbestos exposure would get four hundred thousand dollars the AFL-CIO feels that the that the um, number for smokers who are exposed to asbestos is is way too low and must come up and and in fact that uh, that the other number must come up also but uh, this is the big uh, debate because the AFL-CIO has a, a, a number that is tens of billions of dollars higher than the hundred and eight billion dollars that is that is apparently on the table from industry right now, and, and the insurance industry, I should add, uh, both both uh, the corporate uh, corporations and corporate defendants and the insurance industry would be chipping into this big pot. Next call for Greg Gordon is Wapaka, Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you for taking my call. I'm a first-time caller, and C-SPAN is very, very important to me. Uh, my husband has been on oxygen. It will be six years in August and he has asbestosis. I have been so offended at the companies that are filing bankruptcy purely to get out of covering those people that have been injured by products <clears throat> that, they, that they put out. Uh, Caller, where was your husband exposed to asbestos? My husband was in construction, heavy duty construction for years, and he was exposed at various places where they had to remove the asbestos. And we know that it was ordered by the government. However, that is not the fault of the client who has the problem now. And I was especially offended when our vice president, who was uh, the CEO of that big company who bought uh, a company that did sell asbestos, and he said that these lawsuits were frivolous. I would like the vice president to see what my husband has to go through. We have oxygen 24-7 in our home. Okay, he has thanks, thanks, caller. Greg Gordon. Uh, well, uh, the, what, what you're describing, the, the, the emotions that you're describing, the anger uh, is shared by many, many Americans, American workers and their families. I, I, that's all I can tell you. There are a lot of people very frustrated right now. The idea that they can only get pennies on the dollar and there are a lot of, there's a lot of skepticism about some of these bankruptcies, whether companies were doing, doing this essentially to uh, get out of uh, their responsibilities. When, when was it discovered that asbestos could be damaging? 
Uh, the famed researcher Irving Selikoff at Mount Sinai Hospital in, in New York in the early 1960s, around 1963 or 1964, uh, w was uh, coming out with uh, some very serious health warnings. And here we are 40 years later, and we still have uh, new asbestos exposures occurring in the United States. And in fact, there's legislation also pending on Capitol Hill to ban asbestos, uh, something in the range of 30 million tons came into uh, the in, or were produced in the United States or imported last and, year. And we, who are, are uh, normal people who aren't involved in, in heavy duty construction or tearing it out of schools exposed to asbestos? You can, you can be exposed uh, in casual ways. Uh, Steve McQueen uh, died of, of uh, mesothelioma. I'm not sure if uh, anyone knows how he was exposed. We just lost Congressman Bruce Vento of Minnesota uh, in um, a couple of years ago. He was diagnosed in February of, I believe it was 2001. How had he been died, exposed? Died uh, in, in late fall that year of mesothelioma. He was a school teacher when he came out, got out of college and in, during the summers and sometimes at nights he worked in various factories for a few years around the Twin cities. Uh, his his, his um, widow has a lawsuit and, and family has, has a lawsuit pending against the industry. Westchester County, New York. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Gordon. Well done on your investigative reporting, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems that we have a disease, mesothelioma, uh, and the only cure, apparent cure, are more lawsuits. Uh, and I'm sure you'll agree with that. Uh, there is a program out there, I know as a gentleman called earlier regarding electromagnets and stuff like that, but there's a very successful program that was utilized uh, for drug problems for people that had, on a cellular level, particles and toxins in the body. And I know it's been used on uh, guys coming back from Vietnam with Agent Orange and also uh, and as early as uh, a few months ago, it's still being very effective in New York City with the firemen. And it's called a purification program. And this program actually eliminates toxins and poisons and pulls it out of the system. Mm. It's a combination of sweat program and uh, medically uh, supervised. And the Church of Scientology is the one that has this program. It's ongoing for years, and it's got the highest non recidivity rate in the, in the world when it comes to heroin addicts. Uh, not only it handles to toxins and poisons, you've probably seen a commercial on TV about uh, you know, purification. It showed like a mm. volcano exploding. And what it does is it actually handles the toxins and poisons and pulls it out of, this, of the tissues, which basically even LSD can remain in your system for many, many years. And uh, so it's something that should be looked at, I think, because we're, 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 more, we're putting a lot of attention on lawsuits and creating a disease than really finding a cure. Thank, thank you, caller. Greg Gordon. Well, I, I'm sure that uh, the scientific community will be very interested in, in, in uh, any approach that will uh, rid these toxins from people's bodies. That's all I can say. But going back to the lawsuit question, mm -hmm. um, a lot of commercials, at least here in the D.C. area, about mesothelioma. You see a lot and call this lawyer's number mm -hmm. if you have it. Um, are the trial lawyers active in this? The trial lawyers are in a very interesting position. They're a, a, a significant portion, uh, probably a, a small fraction overall, of the tort bar uh, is devoted entirely uh, to uh, uh, bringing asbestos-related uh, lawsuits. And the lawyers could be the big losers if the, such a, um, a settlement is reached. And that's really the big impetus for the, for the settlement. The Rand Institute for Civil Justice contends that uh, uh, 61 or 60 percent, I guess it's uh, maybe it's 50, 59 to 61 percent, somewhere in that range of the overall cost of asbestos litigation over the last 20, 30 years has been for legal fees, both defense and, and uh, for the plaintiff's fees. And, and this means that if a victim wins, say, a million dollars for a mesothelioma uh, case, it might, uh, he or she might end up with uh, 667000 or 600000 dollars or maybe even only $500,000. Uh, not to say the lawyers take a lot of risk. It's almost all done on contingency. But if this settlement is, is reached, uh, the lawyers' roles will be diminished considerably. They may be needed to um, navigate people through the system, but it won't be, uh, uh, it'll be a pretty well prescribed uh, arrangement. Omaha, Nebraska, you're on the air with Greg Gordon. Yeah, I want to ask, um, first of all, I, I didn't hear 
um, what sort of well, I've, I've worked in construction and I wanted to know what kind of concentration um, of exposure it takes to you know potentially develop asbestosis and also um, in regards to if you know anything about silica uh, I worked a lot with uh, acoustical tile ceilings you know where there's a potential silica exposure and in, in fiberglass insulation Let's get an answer, Colorado time. You may not know this, but uh, one of the international agencies recently named uh, silica uh, dust as a, as a carcinogen, a cancer causer. Um, and uh, how much exposure is not really known, except I think for asbestosis, probably a fair amount. But mesothelioma, some, some scientists b feel that uh, a casual exposure to, to uh, asbestos can cause mesothelioma in 20, 30, 40 years later. Greg Gordon is with the Minneapolis Star Tribune, an investigative reporter and also a correspondent here in Washington. If people want to read your uh, past articles on asbestos, where can they find them? StarTribune.com will have a fair number of them. Thanks for joining us this it's morning to talk about asbestos. Coming up, the House is in session. They'll be uh, doing the Defense Department $400 billion uh, appropriation is what they'll be talking about. Two hearings you might be interested in that we'll be covering today on C-SPAN includes the 9-11 Commission. Lee Hamilton and Tom Kane were out here earlier to talk about that. Uh, they'll be hearing from John McCain and uh, other senators. Jane Garvey, former FAA administrator, will be there. Also, the uh, House Select Committee on Homeland Security will be uh, uh, hearing from Tom Ridge today. Both those hearings will be on C-SPAN. The Tom Ridge Homeland Security hearing will be live on C-SPAN 3 beginning just about right now. Otherwise, check cspan.org for scheduling. Tomorrow will be in New York City. John Batchelor of Batchelor and Alexander WABC radio program will be, um, be one of our guests. We'll see you tomorrow. The House is now in session.